Welcome to worship at Ascension Lutheran Church in Nelson, BC. Today is October 9th and the 18th Sunday after Pentecost. Today is also Thanksgiving Sunday. Now, Thanksgiving is not a church holiday. Thanksgiving is a secular holiday. But you know what? Thanksgiving overlaps into church life very easily. And really, every single worship service and prayer are ele have elements of thanksgiving in them every time. So, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Today's service will have music, special music, lessons, prayers, and a sermon. And though we may be apart, some of us worshiping in our church building and some of us worshiping in this service on video, we are together in spirit. We're really glad you're here. Good morning and welcome to worship. During this post-Pentecost season and on this special day of Thanksgiving, we're reminded of our response to God and the importance of maintaining a sense of humility and confession, as well as appreciation for forgiveness. Let us begin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God in whose image we are made who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We're not faithful in using your gifts. We're not thankful for your bountiful generosity. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We're infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. May our hearts be filled with thanksgiving for all the good in your world. Amen. People of God, we are God's children. And Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice and give thanks. Let us live with gratitude for the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. In Hebrew scripture, the zeal of God's people often confounded them. So to some extent, 
worship ritual was meant to turn antagonism into gratitude. This old direction explains real joy in living as faithfulness to God. Written in Deuteronomy chapter 26, verses 1 to 11. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is given you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it, and settle in it, you shall take some of first of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes a basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number. And there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God.
At the core of our faith and belief in God is gratitude for life. Even in tough times, God cares for us. God will not abandon us, as Paul explains in Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. May the church hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen. for this day, for Thanksgiving Sunday, is recorded in the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John, beginning at verse 25. Glory to you, O Lord. When the disciples found Jesus on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you giving to us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it was my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. God, open our hearts, open our minds, that we hear your word for us. For your word is truth. Amen. Today is a day of worship. Tomorrow is a national holiday. We've listened to a somewhat confusing gospel. A gospel that is at times an argument between Jesus and those who follow him. 
And at other points, it's a proclamation, displaying something of what the Gospel of John, this particular Gospel, is all about. But in other ways, stressing again how often we lose sight of the depth and meaning of what it is to believe with honesty and some sense of deeper understanding. We don't always want to understand, we want to think we know, but it's not the same as understanding. So on this day of worship and the national holiday of Thanksgiving tomorrow, we by nature unconsciously tend to mush those two things together. We thank God for roast turkey and garden produce and pumpkin pie. And to make sense of it, we think somewhat as Jesus' disciples did. That is, we figure manna in the wilderness is a sign of divine favor. Really, I can't help making the mistake of believing it's all about favorites and God loves us best. But today, I wonder, am I the right amount of holy? Is my gratitude based on getting the best deal? The disciples in today's gospel, ask Jesus about the timing of his excursion. Rabbi, when did you come here? And what does this really mean? Could it mean, hey, we thought we'd lost you, and don't you care? Or, why did you take off? Jesus' reply hints at their being worried about their bellies, their own self-interest. What are they supposed to do if Jesus isn't there to take care of them? So their question isn't just about food, but about their general dependency on him to supply their needs. And yet when Jesus says that God has set a seal on him, but implies that seal is also on them, they ignore that and ask a follow-up question. A question that, though validated as worthy people, seems to ignore that the seal is on them. And they ask defensively, what are we supposed to do in order to do God's work? You tell us. You give us the answer. And then if something isn't quite right, it won't be us who are to blame. So I'm going to take license and digress. I like to shop if it gets me what I want. But if it's shopping for Jill and she says, when you're in town, could you stop in at Safeway and pick up some Kicking Horse coffee? I negotiate for a future payback. In my mind, I wonder, why can't she do that? Then, because I may be able to make a deal, I think, hmm, maybe, just maybe, before I go, I could hint that a nice, cheesecake would be a good dessert sometime. You see, it turns a nuisance into my preferred happily ever after ending. My kind of people are in the gospel when Jesus said, because you ate your fill of the loaves. Being wise you may suspect that such deeds lead down a path to a dead end of having stuff, but still being lonely.
A friend visited another church for worship and later over coffee talked with that church's minister. Both of them agreed their churches had a dwindling base of church volunteers. Like the monk and the rabbi in the prologue to M. Scott Peck's book, The Different Drum, they pondered what will become of us. But unlike the story's rabbi who said, of this I know, the Messiah is one of you. They parted like lonely disciples, leaving church and thinking, if not saying, what are we supposed to do in order to do God's work? See, it's not really a question about how can we do things differently. It's a question of faithfulness. Thanksgiving celebrates harvest success, but the truth is Growing and harvesting food is an uncertain business if drought, blight, or a late spring intrude. We know that this last year. The tomatoes haven't been quite as abundant. The apples aren't around us. The bears are hungry. And also, what if you go to Giorama, to the nursery, to buy pepper plants and an odd little thing among the peppers is let to grow and turns out to be a cauliflower. Or it's a nuisance having to stake climbing beans. Better to have little bush beans. They're not so much work, but someone gave you bean seeds and said, try these, they never go stringy. Or another friend leaves you with little eggplants. Who grows eggplants anyway? So you throw them in the ground and something unexpected grows. These are odd successes. Jesus said, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. An odd little success. If we buy peppers and we only want peppers and nothing but peppers, what happens to an odd little plant that hopped on board and rode along with the peppers? Is it a vexing nuisance and you pluck it out? This is the work of God. Believe in him whom he has sent. Today's gospel is droll. Jesus' listeners resist his words. They have their own beliefs, but they demand proof from Jesus for what he says. Do you see the opposites? Do you see the argument? What sign are you going to give us then so that we may see and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. It's just supposed to happen. What an odd kind of success that would be. Reminded of their potential to do the works of God, they resist, they stick to the idea of Jesus doing their work for them. Getting bread from heaven. Give us this kind of bread always. And we wonder, could a little eggplant or a surprise cauliflower succumb 
to neglect by lazy gardeners who think, that's not what I want to grow here anyhow. If we only listen to what suits us, will we never be glad for surprises that shake us up, that make us think differently, that challenge us to be more inventive, to cooperate with one another, to stake the beans and then share our beans. Could it be that the Messiah really is among us? Is it you? May it be so. Please join me in saying the creed into which we were all baptized, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. With the words, hear us, O God, you are invited to respond, your mercy is great. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the bishops, pastors, and deacons, and all of those who assist our ELCIC and our own Ascension Lutheran as leaders. Inspire all leaders of the church to proclaim your mighty deeds, that your saving faith may be known to all. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Majestic God, we give you thanks for land and water, seed time and harvest. Break down boundaries we construct between ourselves and the rest of your creation. Bring renewal and restoration to places affected by pollution and deforestation. Bring healing to those people who are suffering with the effects of climate change, especially in the eastern, southern states and in the maritime provinces of Canada and in Pakistan. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Mighty God, we give you thanks for those in our, community, na in our community, nation, and world who work for justice and peace. Guide those who govern to act on behalf of those marginalized by race, ethnicity, or religion. Be with the leaders of Ukraine and Russia, and let there be peace for the good of the world. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Merciful God, we give you thanks that you hear the cries of those in need. Restore to community those who are stigmatized or set apart for whatever reason, illness, suffering from the toxic drug crisis, feelings of rejection, isolation, lost hopelessness. Send healing to all who are sick, especially David, Peter, Clementine, Marianne, Anne, and Gwen. 
Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Faithful God, we give you thanks for the healing ministries of this congregation and Pastor Brenda. Be with our sister church, Dunbar Lutheran in Vancouver, and Reverend Thomas Keeley. Be with the BC Synod staff, especially Kimberly and Bishop Kathy. Be also with the BC Synod Council as they meet in Vancouver over this following weekend. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give you thanks for your faithful people who have gone before us to your glory. Renew our trust in your eternal promises of mercy, redemption, and new life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Be with us as we live our mission as a community of Christians, empowered by the grace of God through word and sacrament, to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with God. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us, our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Receive with believing hearts the blessing of God. May the God of all creation in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who provides for our every need, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to give thanks and be glad. The blessings of God, Christ, our Savior, God who has created us, and the Holy Spirit who is in us and with us and around us, be with you today and always. Amen.